Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested and happy Friday. Today I have another 3D printing video for you today and it is time sensitive. I wanna give a shout out to our friend, Johnny Fraser Allen, who you may recognize on the site. We met him, he's an artist, sculptor, an amazing talent out of New Zealand working at Weta Workshop. And we first met Johnny when we went to New Zealand a couple of years ago and have kept in touch. In fact, as you'll see linked in the description below, Adam got a chat with Johnny about his his love and obsession of tabletop miniatures and uh, sculpting uh, landscapes and terrain and buildings, entire villages, entire universe that he's called Hagglethorne Hollow for tabletop miniatures. It's one of our favorite videos, the best things we've shot when we were in New Zealand visiting What a Workshop. Uh, and now there is a way for you to get Hagglethorne Hollow at home if you have a 3D printer. That's right, so there is a Kickstarter campaign going on right now. It's wrapping up as you watch this just after the weekends. You wanna get in on this. Uh, and it's basically their first set of Hagglethorne Hollow uh, designs that Johnny has sculpted, physically sculpted, that then have been digitally scanned and then turned into files that you can print on an FDM printer or a resin printer. And I had the chance to print out some of these files at home on both my FDM printer and also my resin printer and want to share some of those prints with you so you get a better sense of how this works. Uh, first of all, this is like big terrain. These are buildings where a spire at 100% size is this big. And at this scale, you really notice that this originated from a hand sculpted design. Like a lot of the 3D printed miniatures or train stuff that you see, it's hard edge modeling, maybe some digital sculpting, uh, but nothing really captures the, the randomness and the kind of organic look than a physically sculpted thing that then is turned into a digital design. And you can really see that in this lovely spire top. And this is just the topper. This then fits on top of, for example, scaled at 50%, a, uh, the tower figure here. Oh, knocked over that topper. But the tower right here, which is comprised of three pieces. So there's a base, there's the centerpiece, and then the spire topper. And even in the base itself, the interiors are all detailed out from staircases to shelving to, to furniture, combination of stonework that protrudes out to rock to wood, um, just really, really incredibly detailed stuff um, in the, the multiple layers as well. And I did print this in a couple different ways. So I printed this in FDM uh, and it's designed really for printing in FDM. Uh, without any extra supports necessary. And so it's a really cool thing if you have an FDM printer that has like a flexible removable build bed for easy uh, pop off pieces, this literally sits on your, uh, your build plate and it just rises up and builds up. So something like this, obviously, very easy to, uh, to print, no supports needed. And then for parts that may need supports, the supports do come built in and are very easy to remove as well, uh, while most things have a wider base and then print upward. Uh, on the resin printer, that's a little, get, little bit more complicated with those same files. Uh, I typically don't print directly on the build plate with a resin printer because prying it off is a, can be a little bit tricky, uh, but you, if you have like a, a WAM plate that's flexible, you can also print it there, uh, but it does work. So I did a couple experiments here, for example, is their guild hall. And it's a great example of the multi-layered design of these buildings. So we'll go from the top, there's a little bit of a, a topper. Um, these are actually split into two halves. So this roof piece is split into two, which you join together, uh, as well as a uh, main floor level. Again, fully realized interior with windows, pantry, stairwell, and then even a dungeon level as well, also with 
extremely detailed, both exterior and interior detail. You cannot gush enough. I mean, you'll see in the close-ups of just the individual stones protruding and that unevenness mixed with the stones blending into the rock. Even in this flat shaded color, you can see it has so much, so much, you know, we say this a lot, sculptural detail that's revealed here. And this is printed at 50 microns. At, again, 50% scaling, which can still work great for your scale of, of miniatures. Uh, it's also a modular system. So the base here of the skilled hall, the dungeon, and the main floor level, this is their medium size, can also be swapped with their, a different topper. So this is now the, uh, the, uh, the chieftain hall, I believe, which has more of a, um, uh, like a, the, the, the hatch rooftop. Um, it's not brickwork, uh, it's a different style, but this can easily this be removed and swap back in. And so there's a lot of really well thought out design of where, you know, where the, the spires are, where the windows are, where the, the chimney fits relative to the top of the spire, you know, popping this on top of here and vice versa gives it a lot of fun, like playfulness that you can do uh, with this type of set. I did try printing a bunch of this right onto the build, build bed. And so one of the things that you also have to factor in if you're doing resin printing is uh, the elephant foot. Uh, the elephant foot in the room. Uh, in uh, FDM printing, you can sometimes, actually I was able to avoid it here, but the first couple layers, if they don't cool fast enough, they kind of spread, and what you get is this extra stepping uh, on the base layer uh, of your print, which if you're trying to have something mesh perfectly together, you have to remove that. And you can compensate for that on an FDM printer, but it also pops up on resin prints as well. Because your bottom layers are typically uh, exposed much longer than your subsequent layers, you know, 25 to 40 seconds or so on a bottom layer, it tends to, um, it tends to uh, expose and cure a little bit extra resin, um, more so than it's normally the layer would be expecting. And so you also get an extra stepping of what's called an, an elephant's foot on your prints. And I did come across that with my standard settings. And so you can see it's not perfectly fit here because the bottom layer sticks out just a little bit. It's very easy to fix after the fact and just get a sanding stick. And for your resin, just make sure you're wearing protection uh, for respiration and, and sand away the elephant's foot to get it to perfectly merge. Or you can actually compensate for that in the software as well. If you're using uh, Lychee Slicer, it's a pro feature, but uh, in ChuChuBox, it's their uh, version, I believe, 1.8 and newer. Uh, you go into your advanced settings and you, for uh, two axes, your A and B axes, interior and exterior, uh, you can adjust an elephant foot's uh, compensation to shrink your bottom layer just a little bit so that the overexposure um, actually compensates for that. And I was able to find better success with subsequent fits, uh, prints, so that it's better fitted right off of the build plate. And you can see with the screen grab here, my settings for the Elegoo Saturn for the elephant's foot. Um, and I was also using this as a chance to test some new resin as well. So I was just sent this Vulcan resin by the Atlas 3D company. Uh, they're a company that do um, support generation for a lot of the popular um, 3D modelers that have Patreons like Lord of the Print um, and Cobra Mode, which we've talked about on this show before. Uh, and now they have their own line of resin. So they actually just wrapped up a, uh, a crowdfunding campaign for this resin that also comes with a bunch of additional models. This is very much ABS-like resin, and I printed the tower in both uh, the Vulcan resin as well as with some water-soluble resin. Water-soluble resin, I like as it prints fast with the Elegoo water-soluble 2.5 second exposure speeds on a mono printer work really well and, and, and makes prints pretty nice, but they end up being uh, a little brittle. You know, I can have to gently handle this if they fall. Uh, they're more kind of good for lightweight prints. If you want something more durable, go with ABS style resin, Soraya Tech, even Elegoo, they have ABS-like resins. And this one is akin to that. The exposure times are a little longer at around 3.8 to four seconds on a model printer. So adding about 50% longer print times, but um, based on just a few prints on this, 
The quality of this looks really nice. It's, uh, they say it's rated for the vroom settings for the faster lift and uh, descending of the build plate, uh, which means that you know it flows very nicely to cover up and fill in that vat uh, as you raise and lower the, uh, the prints off the build, uh, off the build platform. Um, so it's a very fluid resin. It's not you know gunky or sticky, and I had a pretty good time printing with that. So check that out. They're bundling this with a bunch of their uh, their uh, partner designs, as well as some cool designs they've done internally. And I'll have a link to where you can find that in the description below as well. But this is just a glimpse into Hagglethorn Hollow. My recommendation for the designers out there, Johnny, if you're watching, if your team is watching, is give us some. Uh, uh, files designed for resin printers, you know, where I can print off axis. I don't need to print directly onto the build plate um, and and to have my own support structure or some pre-support designs uh, for resin printing in mind. Um, but it's been really fun to print it this past week. Uh, and um, they've met many of their stretch goals. So if you want to get in on that Kickstarter campaign, you're going to get a nice bounty of print files to enter Johnny's designed world. Uh, and that's it for this week and a quick look and a spotlight on the 3D printing world. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.